Hello, I am Seamus Donahue of Eve University, and this video is an introduction to mining. Mining is the process of taking a ship fit with mining lasers or some other similar module out to some asteroids in space and using mining lasers on the asteroids to pull asteroid ore. You would then take that asteroid ore back to a station or to some other sort of facility that has reprocessing -proce services and turn the asteroid ore into minerals. In the in-game economy of EVE Online, this is a very essential activity because ships and modules that players use, and the ammunition as well, do not come from absolutely nothing. Some players had to go mining asteroid ore, turn it into minerals, use the minerals to manufacture ships, modules, and ammunition. Those ships, modules, and ammunition then get into fights and explode, and they no longer exist, or they turn into wrecks, which are then salvaged for salvage materials, which then make rigs, but I digress. But to replace those ships and modules, you need completely new ships and modules. You need to mine more asteroid ore, refine it into more minerals, and manufacture more ships, modules, and ammunition. Right? This makes EVE Online significantly different from uh, other space games. In Elite Dangerous, if your ship blows up, you just have to pay a 5% insurance fee and you get an exact duplicate of your ship. Uh, in Star Trek Online, uh, the death penalty is just that you're out of commission for maybe 15-20 seconds, and depending on your difficulty setting, uh, you, might have, you might carry an extra debuff or two until you get that fixed. But with EVE Online, when your ship explodes, it actually explodes. And you're going to have to uh, replace it all over again. And it has to be replaced from some sort of raw materials. If you're coming from space engineers, that's not a new concept to you. Right? So, mining is very important. So, how do you get started in mining? Well, this is a Venture Class Outer Ring Excavations Mining Frigate. This is going to be, as a new player, this is going to be your basic starting mining ship. By the way, if you're returning to EVE Online from a long absence, be aware that the four racial mining frigates uh, have been repurposed to other roles. There is no longer one mining frigate for each race. The Galente Navitas, for example, is nowadays a, the Galente's frigate size uh, remote armor repair systems boat. So, it's, so the Navitas and the other three for the other races are no longer mining ships. Your Venture is your Tech 1 mining frigate. Right. So you need a ship. Uh, the Venture is the natural place to start off with. Uh, but any ship that has turret hardpoints and high power slots can be used to fit mining lasers. It's just that the Venture in particular is bonused for them. So a 5% bonus to mining yield uh, per level of the mining frigate bonus, as, as well as a 100% roll bonus to uh, mining yield straight off the bat. Right? So the Venture is bonused for it, but any ship that has high slots and turret hard points will suffice. Next, you need mining lasers of some sort. Uh, so a minor one is your basic example if you want to start on asteroid ores. Okay. Uh, you will probably also want to have a survey scanner, which, and I'll show you how to use these things when I actually get out into space. A survey scanner will allow you to see the composition of uh, of the asteroids that are in space near you. You'll probably want a micro warp drive because when you drop out of warp, you might be eh, 20, 30 kilometers away from the nearest asteroids. So you might want to cover the distance quickly. Depending on where exactly you go mining, you might come under attack from NPCs, uh, uh, NPC pirates, also known as rats. So you might want to have a resistance module in one of your mid slots. 
I'm going to use an adaptive invulnerability field one. And for the low slot, uh, I'm going to have a mining laser upgrade one. And a mining laser upgrade one makes my high slot mining lasers better. But with the downside that the mining laser upgrade one itself requires some amount of CPU. And it also increases the CPU requirement of my mining lasers. Right. Uh, rig slots are completely at your discretion. Though, depending on your skills, you might not have high enough levels in your capacitor-related skills. Namely, uh, let's see, it's in engineering. Uh, capacitor management and capacitor systems operation. Uh, so depending on your level in these skills, uh, you might not necessarily have enough capacitor energy to keep your mining lasers running. In my case, that's not going to be an issue. The capacitor display in my fitting window indicates a deficit, but this display assumes that everything that can use capacitor is eating capacitor all the time. I'm only going to use the micro warp drive to close distance quickly to get within range of asteroids. I'm not going to run it all the time, so in my case, that's not an issue. Uh, but if you don't have those skills in capacitor management and capacitor systems operation, maybe you want to throw on some small capacitor control circuits uh, to improve your capacitor regeneration time. All right, so let me actually... Oh, one other thing. The Venture does have a small drone bay. Uh, in my particular case, I decided to throw in a couple of Hornet 1s. And do make sure that you actually have the requirements for this. You're going to need Drones Level 3 <coughs> and Light Drone Operation Level 1 at a minimum. Right. Uh, so throw in a couple of Hornets or a couple of Hobgoblins into the drone bay. Because depending on where you go mining, you might have to deal with rats. And your high slot, your turret hardpoints are occupied with mining lasers, which cannot, under any circumstances, be used to shoot at hostiles. So if you have to defend yourself, you're going to need to use drones to do it. Let me actually undock. Waiting for the undock draw. Here we go. Now I am in space. And there's the station that I just undocked from. And there's a citadel somebody set up over there. All right, so I'm going to right-click in empty space, and let me select asteroid belts, and let me just pick a belt at random. Generally speaking, you might not necessarily want to go for the first asteroid belt in the list. This is commonly referred to by players as top belt. In other words, the top belt in this list. And when players challenge each other to fights, usually they go. Uh, usually they arrange to meet at the top belt. All right. Uh, so I'm gonna pick. I mean, that's not an issue in my case. I'm in high security space, so anybody who shoots at me unprovoked is gonna get fried by Concord. Uh, but just out of habit, I'm gonna pick a different belt to warp to. So I'm gonna warp to an asteroid belt and would you look at that? <laughs> Serpentis Initiate and Serpentis Scout. Let's deal with that problem first. Uh, I don't have a very good target lock range. Alright, let me turn on my shield hardener. Left click and drag. And I have hotkeys set for all drones engage.
So yes, this is a 0.7 security system. It's still high security, but at 0.8 and lower, you can expect to encounter uh, hostiles, uh, hostile rats in the belts. Concord will protect you from other players, or rather, they'll destroy any other players who shoot at you unprovoked. Uh... Hmm. Uh, return to Drone Bay. So, Concord will destroy any other players who shoot at you unprovoked, uh, but they will not protect you from the rats, so you'll have to deal with the rats yourself. So, now I'm near a whole bunch of asteroids. Uh, I can... Alright, so I have one of my overview tabs set to show me asteroids. And I can target lock from the overview list. If I wanted to. Or, I can turn on my survey scanner. And it will run for one cycle. And it will show me a list of the different types here. Uh, so, Azur Plagioclase, as an example. I can click the Show Info button, and I can show info on Azur Plagioclase, and I can read the description on it. Uh, Plagioclase is not amongst the most valuable ore types around, but it contains a large amount of pyrite and it is thus always in constant demand. It also yields some Tritanium and Mexilon, available in 0.9 security status solar systems or lower. I can also take a look at, for example, Omber. I can show info on Omber. Uh, Omber is a common ore that is still an excellent ore for novice miners, as it has a sizable portion, portion of isogen, as well as some Tritanium and Pyrite. A few trips of mining this in a novice is quick to rise in status. Available in 0.7 security status solar systems or lower. So the description on the asteroids themselves uh, uh, will tell you where you can find these things. Uh, you can also find the information on the different asteroid types from the market window. So manufacture and research, materials. Uh, is it raw materials? Or, yes. So raw materials, ore, and there we go. There's Zomber, there's Plagioclase, there's Pyroxeres. So uh, if I want to know more about Kernite. So Kernite is a fairly common ore type that l yields a large amount of Mexilon. Besides Mexilon, the Kernite also has a bit of Tritanium and Isogen, available in 0 0.7 security status solar systems or lower. It's worth pointing out that some asteroid types are actually also limited by region. So I don't think I'm going to find any Kernite in Galente space. If I want a 0.7 system that has Kernite, I have to go over to the Amar Empire, for example. So this description doesn't tell you everything about where you can find it. So if you're not finding a particular asteroid type in your region, you might need to go to another Sovereign Powers space. So you're not finding it in Galente space, try... Minmatar space. You don't find it there either. Try Amarian space. You don't find it there. Try Kaldari space. So on and so forth. Right. So, uh, but anyway, let's go with the Azur Plagioclase. I'm going to control left click. And I'm going to hit F1 and F2. And that turns on my mining lasers. Uh, and as long as we're waiting... I'm going to show info on the mining lasers. Uh, under the attributes tab, they have an optimal range of 10 kilometers. Okay, let me switch back to my first overview tab. So the mining lasers can mine up to 10 kilometers away, absolutely no further than that. Uh, and they have a mining amount that's listed as a number of cubic meters. So 164.06 cubic meters in a 60 second cycle. And let me right click my capacitor, open or hold. I forgot to mention that the Venture has more than just the general cargo hold. I mean, it has a cargo hold, it's got a 50 meter standard cargo hold, but it's also 
but it's also got a 5,000 cubic meter ore hold as well. Right? And if this is a specialized cargo hold, it can only hold asteroid ore. So the Venture can hold up to 5,000 cubic meters as long as it's asteroid ore. If it's anything else, it, it's only got 50 cubic meters of space, and the drone bay only has 10 cubic meters. So one cycle has already passed, and it's pulled 936 Azer Plagioclase, which takes up 327.6 cubic meters. Uh, 327.6 divided by 2, which is, of course, you divide that by 2. So that's 163.8 cubic meters. But this says 164.06 cubic meters. What's going on here? Well, the Azer Plagioclase, if we show info on that again, all right, go to the Attributes tab. This has a volume of 0 0.35 cubic meters per unit. And your mining lasers can only pull up an integer number of units. It can't pull up half a unit of Azer Plagioclase. It cannot pull up three quarters of a unit of Veldspar. It cannot pull up one third of a Jaspit. It doesn't work like that. That's not going to work. So it's going to pull up as much of the asteroid ore as it can, as long as it's an integer number of units and it fits within the capacity stated for the mining laser. So this Azure Plagio Clase is 0 0.35 cubic meters per unit. Show info on the mining laser again. Given my skills and bonuses, each mining laser cycle pulls 164.06 cubic meters. And again, where did my calculator go? Here we are. So 164.06 divided by 0.35, that's 468.74 units per cycle. But of course, it only pulls up an integer, so it's going to round down. So that's going to be 468. And I've got two of these mining lasers running. So every minute, the two mining lasers are pulling up 936. Right? And... Uh, the mine, while I've been talking, the mining lasers have had time to do three full cycles, so I now have 2,808 units of Azer Plagioclase. You can get an approximate idea for when your ore, ore hold is going to fill up, uh, just by saying 5,000 divided by 164.06 divided by two lasers should take roughly 15 minutes or so to fill up my ore hold. That's fine as a rough approximation. Right? But as for how many units of ore it's pulling up, it goes by the calculation I've just, just described. The mining amount divide by the size per unit of the ore in question. Right? Keeping in mind, it can only pull up an integer number of units. You might wonder what asteroid ores are most profitable in terms of what's going to make you the most money per hour. That will depend on a number of factors, but most heavily it depends on uh, the prices of the minerals. Asteroid ores are typically almost always convert, uh, processed into minerals because that's all that they're good for. There are some exceptions some storyline missions will ask for the raw asteroid ore in certain amounts. So, uh, Materials for War Preparation is the name of the mission, and there are different variants. I've seen levels 1, 2, 3, and 4. And depending on the level, it might ask you for 999 Veldspar, or it might ask you for some amount of scordite or it might ask you for some amount of amber or some or 8000 kernite i'm forgetting the exact numbers off the top of my head so those missions will ask you for the actual raw ore other than that asteroid ore is only good for being turned into minerals so if you're interested in looking up information on that uh the website I personally go to is ore.cerlestes.de, and you can 
and this will give you an estimate on how much each asteroid ore is worth based on the actual mineral prices. So here in the ISK column, you'll see a couple of numbers for each cell. The smaller number in parentheses is interstellar credits per cubic meter of the raw ore. And that's assuming, that's making some sort of assumptions about uh, how, how much of the minerals you can actually get out of the asteroid ore. It won't actually be a 100% refine, and if you're returning to EVE Online from a year or two of absence, no, there is no 100% refine anymore. Uh, and the reasons for that have to deal with um, CCP wanting to make uh, null security facilities better than low security facilities, and low security processing facilities better than high security facilities. Uh, but this at least gives you a good baseline for comparison and you can sort according to this column. Traditionally, Omber tends to be the worst choice in terms of interstellar credits uh, per, un uh, per cubic meter. Right? So typically you want to go for almost anything else. Based on current market prices, uh, Plagioclase is the best choice for a high security ore to mine if all you care about is making money. Next best choice would be Pyroxeries and then Veldspar. Uh, if you're mining in low security, or you're hunting in high security space for uh, cosmic anomalies that have asteroids, then the best low security ore is Jaspit, at least right now based on current mineral prices. Uh, Hemorphite and Hedrogite aren't too shoddy in comparison. So Jaspit gets you about 336 isk per cubic meter, and Hedbergite gets you 305 is per cubic meter. Again, contrast this with the high security ores. The best right now is Plagioclase at about 286 isk per cubic meter, with Omber at the very bottom, 217 isk per cubic meter. And then we start looking at the null security ores. Mercoxi is 728 isk per cubic meter. Then you've got Arcanor at 433 isk per cubic meter, and keeps going down from there. Right. Uh, so once you've filled up your cargo hold or some sort of threat shows up and you need to run uh, or maybe you just get bored uh, you can turn off your mining lasers and you can go back to station where did which station did i come from there we go i might as well dock there warp drive active by the way, this is the mining amount uh, if you allow it to run the full 60-second cycle. If you interrupt it, say, two-thirds of the way through, but let's say you interrupt it at 41 seconds, uh, then in that case, it's going to pull up 41 divided by 60 times your stated amount. That's how much volume. In my case, if it were 41 Talking seconds, it would only pull up 112.1 cubic meters. But again, of course, it's, uh, what is this, Pagioclase or Pyroxers? Uh, it doesn't matter. Divided by 0.35, it only pulls up 320 units of that um, if I interrupt the cycle. But I'm back in station. All right. I move the asteroid ore uh, to my station item hanger. And I can right-click the asteroid ore and reprocess. And this will tell me uh, how much I can reprocess this for. Uh, and it's worth pointing out, let me show info. If you show info in the Azure Plagioclase and you go to the Industry tab, it gives you the baseline numbers. So uh, you need 100 units to reprocess a batch of Azure Plagioclase. Uh, so you cannot reprocess this stuff in batches of less than 100 units per batch. For each batch, uh, you get, if you had 100% refine, you would get 113 tritanium, 224 pyrite, and 113 mexilon. Of course, you're not going to get 100%. Uh, so if you mouse over this number in the reprocessing window, it tells you, first of all, what the base yield is. This is an NPC station in high security space, so the base yield is 
Uh, and then you get multipliers on this base yield, depending on your skills. I've got reprocessing level 5, that gives me a times 1.15 bonus. I've got reprocessing efficiency level 5, that gives me a times 1.1. And then I've got, uh, what is this again? Plaid Shield. I've got Plaid Shield Clay's Processing level 4, which gives me a times 1.08. So 50% times these three multipliers gets me a 68.3%. Right? Uh, so I've got enough material here for 90 batches. So what I'm getting out from this, uh, what I'm getting from this process is these numbers times 90 times 0.683. And let me actually double check all of that. So the tritanium is an example, 113 times 90. So that's a total of 10,170 tritanium times 0.683, uh, that gives me 6,946 units of tritanium. The game says 6,947, that's fine. Uh, that's within round off error, right? So 6,947 is uh, how much tritanium I'm gonna get out of this. And then the pyrite and the mexilon follow the same calculation. Uh, it is possible to get better numbers than this, uh, but I'm not going to go into detail in that on this uh, particular video. Uh, you will be shown what the ISK cost is for reprocessing these uh, uh, this asteroid ore into minerals. And if memory serves, I believe you can reduce this ISK cost by being on good terms with uh, the, corp, the NPC corp that owns the station. Um, Ignore where it says Minmitar Republic to Seamus Dunahoo, positive 10. This is the Singularity test server, so I used a uh, slash command to boost my standings up to positive 10. But my actual standings with the corporation, Republic Security Services to Seamus Dunahoo, positive 3.23. So that reduces some of the costs involved in running a reprocessing job. So I pay this amount about 8,600 disc. All right. I have 31 Azure Plagio Clays left over. All right. And I get this Tritanium, this Pyrite, and this Mexilon. And I can right click and view market details on the Tritanium. And I can try, if there are any buy orders near me, I can try selling the Tritanium to buy orders on the market. In my particular case, um, about four jumps away from the nearest buy order. Uh, so I would have to haul this stuff four jumps over to Orval 1 Federation Navy Assembly Plant in order to sell my tritanium. Uh, but I could probably sell it for, and let me actually grab my calculator here again, uh, 6947 times 4.97. And of course I'm going to lose some on sales taxes, so somewhere around 33,000, 34,000 interstellar credits. Which might not sound like much, but if you do enough mining, uh, you will make a uh, ISK over time. Right? So those are the basics of mining. Uh, in later videos, I will probably get around to more advanced mining vessels, such as the mining barges and the expedition frigates, and I might also try to talk a little bit about the more advanced processing facilities, facilities that have better than 50% base yield. I believe the best facilities out in null security space start off with a 57% base yield, but I gotta look that up. Anyway, I'm Seamus Dunahoo of EVE University. Thank you for watching.